Good afternoon, dear friends. Welcome back to NNF Newborn Online Learning Module. I'm Dr. Shabir. Yesterday, myself and Dr. Sridhar had posted a video on basics of neonatal sepsis. Today, we are continuing our presentation with the evaluation part of neonatal sepsis. We use various diagnostic tests as part of evaluation of suspected neonatal sepsis. And these tests help us to rule in sepsis when it is actually present. And so that we can start treatment with the suspected sepsis correctly and it can be continued based on the test results and at times these tests help us to rule out sepsis that we would have started treatment for sepsis on clinical grounds and when you get a result which is negative for sepsis we can stop treatment so that unnecessary antibiotic ex exposure can be avoided. An ideal test should pick up all babies with sepsis. That means it should have 100% sensitivity. And if the test is negative, we should be able to say that there is no sepsis with 100% confidence. That means it should have 100% negative predictive value. But in reality, 100% sensitivity and 100% negative predictive value is not achievable. An ideal lab test should have certain other parameters also and it should be easy to transport the sample for the test and it should have a short turnaround time. The test should be performed with using small volume of blood and there should be standard definite cutoff values for differentiating normal and septic babies. The test result should show some change with the progress of the disease and the test should become abnormal soon after the infection. In reality, there is no ideal test which satisfies all these criteria. When do you evaluate for sepsis? There are various guidelines on this aspect. You can use any of the guidelines. NICE guideline is one of the popular guidelines for evaluating uh, neonatal sepsis. It has described various risk factors and certain risk factors are given red flag symbol. So, you have to see whether your baby is having any of the risk factors. And if you have any of the red flag signs among these risk factors, or if you have clinical indicators of sepsis, start antibiotic after sending your evaluation. If two or more known red flag indicators are present, start your evaluation but you can wait for antibiotics until you get the test results. There are various tests. Some tests are based on pathogen detection and some other tests are based on host response to infection. Culture of organism or the blood culture is the gold standard for diagnosing uh, neutral sepsis. Other tests which are based on pathogen detection are polymerase chain reaction. Certain tests such as uh, blood counts, acute phase reactants, genomics and proteomics associated with sepsis are based on the host response to infection. As I said earlier, blood culture is considered as a gold standard currently, though it's an imperfect gold standard. In a study where the blood culture was compared with the autopsy finding, it has got a sensitivity of 82% and specificity of 96% and it has got a positive predictive value of 94% and negative predictive, negative predictive value of 87%. In practice, the sensitivity of blood culture may be much lower. Why should blood culture be negative in an infected baby? There are various reasons for not getting a positive blood culture when you have actually a bacteremia in a neonate. It may be due to small volumes of blood which you have collected in the culture bottle and mother baby, mother or baby might have received antibiotics and the, sometimes the level of bacteremia may be very low. In that situation, if you have not taken an adequate uh, sample, you might not get a positive growth. 
and certain bacteria may might require special media for for growth and sometimes your clinical illness may not be due to bacterial disease some viruses like uh, enterovirus and cmv can exactly mimic bacterial sepsis what is the ideal blood volume for blood culture ideal would be 1 ml but there are reports saying that uh, even lower lo amount of blood in the culture bottle might give a reasonably high yield of the culture other cultures like uh, central line blood from central lines tracheal aspirates are often performed in clinical practice the cultures from central lines may just represent a colonization and need not be infection all the time and it has to be coupled with a peripheral blood sample to confirm the central line associated bloodstream infection tracheal aspirates also may re just represent the contamination or colonization need not be an evidence for infection all the time surface cultures such as skin culture external layer umbilicus etc are not really clinically beneficial and urine culture is indicated in late onset sepsis in late early onset sepsis the yield is really low so urine culture can be performed as part of sepsis evaluation in late onset sepsis the certain tests which are considered as sepsis screen because in most of the situations the blood culture might take a few days to get a positive result and in every situation you might not get a positive culture even if there is uh, actual infection so various tests have been used as a quick test for evaluating a suspected baby these are collectively called sepsis screen it include Uh, blood cell blood cell counts especially white blood cell counts and absolute neutrophil count immature to, to total uh, neutrophil ratio c reactive protein micro esr etc the sensitivity of these uh, tests are not very high the sensitivity of the wbc indices may be about uh, 30 to 50% but uh, practically it is very easy to do these tests and the ite ratio has got a good negative predictive value its sensitivity may be around 60 to 90% and specificity is around 50 to 75% in certain situations this uh, wbc counts may get altered even without sepsis maternal hypertension is a well known cause for leukopenia the various conditions such as maternal fever neuter seizures etc which cause leukocytosis similarly high it ratio is seen in various other neonatal conditions such as maternal fever pneumothorax asphyxia etc acute phase reactants are another group of tests which is commonly used as sepsis screen these are group of molecules which are produced in the body as a response to inflammation it need not be infection all the time it may be elevated following a trauma surgery etc most of these proteins are synthesized from liver following stimulation by some pro inflammatory cytokines such as interleukin 1 interleukin 6 tnf alpha etc the various uh, acute phase reactants the popular ones are crp procalcitonin albumin transferrin fibrinogen etc all these acute phase reactants might be having some physiological role in innate immunity almost all these acute phase reactants show a rise following an infection except albumin and transferrin which may decrease following a acute infection so they are considered as negative acute phase reactants of these Uh, in clinical practice uh, the most widely used one is the reactive protein which show an elevation and a peak around uh, 24 to 48 hours after the onset of infection physiologically the c reactive protein activates the classical complement pathway 
and thus it helps the opsonization of pathogens and helps in complement mediated destruction of pathogens. There are various methods of detection of uh, C-reactive protein. The older methods are capillary tube precipita precipitation and gel immunodiffusion, which are time consuming and less sensitive. The new methods like, such as nephelometry and ELISA are quick, in which uh, you can get a result within 30 to 60 minutes in nephelometry and within 10 minutes in ELISA. And these newer tests are more reliable. The CRP values doubles within 8 hours of onset of infection and peaks around 2 to 3 days after inflammation. Hence, the ideal timing for performing a CRP for sepsis would be 18 to 24 hours after the onset of infection. That means if you do the CRP early in the course of the illness, you might get a normal CRP levels. The sensitivity varies from 50 to 90 percent and specificity is around 85 to 90 percent. The serial CRPs, that is two or three CRPs at a gap of 12 to 24 hours, has a good negative predictive value. It is as high as 99 percent. So if you get a normal CRP values serially, you can reasonably exclude a sepsis. But there are certain situations in which you might uh, get ab abnormally high CRP even without infection such as maternal chorioamnitis, asphyxia, meconium aspiration syndrome, respiratory distress syndrome, viral infections, etc. Procalcitonin is another acute phase reaction which is studied in neonatal sepsis but there is some limitation on procalcitonin when compared to CRP. CRP, the procalcitonin values naturally varies in the first 48 hours after birth, hence it may not be useful in evaluation of early onset sepsis. One recent meta-analysis showed that procalcitonin has got a sensitivity and specificity around 80% and it is the diagnostic accuracy of procalcitonin is higher in late onset sepsis and with it the, has got a sensitivity of around 95% and specificity of 78% in late onset sepsis. And one recent meta-analysis has showed that uh, procalcitonin might help in guiding the treatment decisions and it might help us to reduce the duration of antibiotic treatment. There are newer pathogen detection methods such as uh, molecular or DNA-based tests. This can be done either from whole blood or from a culture growth from the culture media. Most of these tests have got a short turnaround time and some tests can even detect the genes which mediate the antibiotic resistance. So the conventional blood culture which are commonly used and nowadays most of the units are using the back tech or back alert systems which are much superior and uh, giving early results compared to the conventional blood cultures. The rapid diagnosis tests are even um, more easy to get the results, more uh, early you, you can get the results but they have gone they have got their own limitations in conventional uh, bacterial cultures we might draw the blood on day 0 and uh, you might start the antibiotic most of the time we might start empiric broad spectrum antibiotic and you might get the antibiotic sensitivity pattern not earlier than day 3 of starting the test. So from probably by day 3 or day 4 you can start uh, targeted antimicrobial therapy. But when you use rapid diagnostic test along with the standard blood culture, you can you may get the test results within 24 hours so that you can cut short your broad spectrum antibiotic exposure 
you can start your targeted antimicrobial therapy much earlier. The various tests of these uh, symptoms tests can can be performed directly from the blood, and the other tests are performed from the bacterial cultures, which are obtained from the culture media. Some are based on uh, the mass spectrometry, which identify the the, uh, the protein and uh, peptides which are present in the bacterial growth and other tests are based on the nucleic acid methods which identify the bacterial DNA and bacterial genes. All these uh, tests help us uh, early identification and they might uh, give you the antibiotic sensitivity test earlier than the conventional cultures and some tests even give uh, the antibiotic resistant gene testing but it has got certain limitation. It might not provide you a comprehensive antibiotic sensitive test profiling or even if they detect they might uh, detect only a limited antibiotic, antibiotic uh, antimicrobial resistant genes and uh, there are problems with the resistant gene detection also and sometimes even if you find a resistant gene that may, may not be clinically important because the, the presence of a gene is not always equivalent to the expression of a gene. So it might give a false result. When we compare the multiple multiplex PCR systems, the concordance with blood culture is only around 50 to 60 percent. So there is a possibility of over treatment when you use uh, these newer tests. Coming to the lumbar puncture, which is commonly performed as part of uh, neonatal sepsis evaluation, 15 to 30 percent of babies with sepsis are supposed to have associated meningitis. The incidence is around 1% uh, among 1000 live births. The incidence is higher in preterm babies and LP should always be considered whenever there is uh, the meningitis is a possible diagnosis. So it is more common with late onset sepsis. So as part of late onset sepsis evaluation, LP should be performed almost always. And as part of suspected early onset sepsis, whenever you consider meningitis as a possibility or if you have a positive blood culture or if you have a uh, other pa clinical parameters which says that baby is at a high risk for meningitis should consider a lumbar puncture. If baby is too clinically unstable, you can postpone LP but once the baby becomes stable, you should perform a LP. After antibiotic therapy, the CS of pleostatosis and abnormal CS of chemistry might persist for a few days. Although CS of culture becomes sterile if you have instituted sensitive antibiotic in the beginning. You should remember that microorganisms can be isolated from CSF even when the CS of uh, biochemistry and CS of cell count shows a normal result. So most important thing is CS of culture. Even when you have a normal biochemistry and CS of cell counts, you should actively look for growth in the CS of cultures. The normal CS of reference uh, values for the counts, protein, and sugar uh, is variable and at various gestational age and various uh, postnatal age. And uh, there is no standard definition on which uh, beyond which we have to take a abnormal CS of uh, finding which is absolutely diagnostic for meningitis. When you take a CS of cutoff of 25 cells per millimeter cube, it, it gives 71% of sensitivity for diagnosing meningitis and a protein level more than 170 milligram per deciliter 
gives you 61% sensitivity for diagnosing meningitis and a sugar value less than 24 will give you only 32% of sensitivity. So none of these tests are having a very high sensitivity for diagnosing neonatal meningitis. The positive predictive value of all these tests are low, it's only 4 to 10 percent. If you have a normal series of protein, that might be the most useful parameter for excluding a, excluding a meningitis. To conclude, always do blood culture before you start antibiotics. Always have a unit policy on when to evaluate for sepsis and when to start antibiotics. You can follow AAP and NF or NICE guidelines or you can have your own local guidelines. Please remember that sepsis screen may not be very sensitive. But most of the test has got a reasonable negative predictive value especially when you do it serially. Serial CRPs and procalcitonin may help in ruling out sepsis and there is no ideal test. Even if we say blood culture is gold standard, it is an imperfect gold standard for diagnosing neutral sepsis. Thank you.